Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today we're taking a look at blue-white control. Love it or hate it, it's often a pillar of the standard format, so it's good to know the ins and outs of how the current version of blue-white operates. And I've actually had to make a few changes to this list since I originally prepared it for the best of one meta, where a ley line of resonance was still legal. Now that it's banned in best of one, I've taken out not on my watch, which was quite good in that matchup, and I've also trimmed the numbers of Elspeth's smite, and only playing three copies of the Lockway which was also quite good in that matchup. So as you can see, if you're playing a control deck, you always have to be adjusting it to the current meta, so it rarely stays the same for a very long time. So if you see this a few weeks after posting it, then you might already have to make a few changes. And currently I'm also playing three copies of Temporary Lockdown, which is pretty good against all the aura strategies that have sort of replaced the mono red aggro decks as maybe the next best aggro deck in the format. This can potentially ignore ward and hexproof tricks and just exile the opponent entire board, although always have to watch out for Sheltered by Ghosts, which can also get rid of the lockdown to give the opponent's stuff back. And then as any good blue-eye control deck, we've got lots of counter spells. At two mana, there's no more lies. A very good early will also exile the spell we counter, but it will drop off as the game progresses. And then at three mana, we can already cast three steps ahead. This is a very versatile counter spell, since we can potentially choose multiple modes, including draw two and discard. So we can potentially counter, draw two and discard for five mana total, which is often used. And occasionally can also make a copy of a creature we control, such as maybe our whale, which can also help close out the game. So usually we're using the adventure first to send the creature packing, and then later we can cast the 6-6. Six, six. Can also play it in our turn if we need it back on defense, but usually we prefer playing it end of turn so we can keep up all our mana for our various instants. And then our other counter spell is Spellgyre, which has the mode of either counter spell or surveil two and then draw two cards. Paying four mana for a hard counter is a little bit pricey, but we do get the flexibility here. And there are board states where having a counter spell isn't very useful, but instead digging for a specific answer like one of our board wipes can save our day. So then surveil two, draw two can dig pretty deep. So I've been liking four copies of that as well. And then besides temporary lockdown, we're also playing two copies of Sunfall as another very powerful sweeper that can leave behind an incubator token. Only playing two copies can easily increase that number if the metagame were to shift, but right now there's not too many mid-range creature decks, which is where Sunfall really shines. And then we've got some additional card draw, besides three steps ahead and spell gyre, we can also draw two at instant speed with quick study, so keeping up mana to either draw or cast a counter spells, quite nice. And then we've got some more cheap removal spells, Elspeth Smite, good against attacking creatures, exiling them as well, still good against uh, versions of red aggro that have stuck around after the leyline ban. And then into the Flood Maw, another versatile bounce spell, can bounce creatures or non-creature permanents if we give the opponent a fish token. And then at two mana, Get Lost can either answer creatures, planeswalkers, or enchantments. The map tokens we can also maybe clean up with our lockdown, so that's quite synergistic. And then Soul Partition is another very flexible answer. We can use it to exile the opponent's stuff, make them pay two more mana to redeploy them. But we can also combine it with our win condition, and that's often in Jace, the perfected mind, which we're trying to play two or three copies, often milling the opponent for 15 right away. Can also use it to maybe control the board and maybe draw a few cards as well with a minus two, especially if they have 20 or more cards in the graveyard, then we get to draw three. But often the play is just to play Jace, immediately mill for 15, and with two or three of those that can close out the game. Or occasionally we can leave our Jace on one loyalty and then use Soul Partition to exile it, and then we get to replayed for 4 mana to mill them once again for 15, so that can also help speed things up. And then the mana base is also very important for a control deck, 4 copies of Demolition Field, mostly to deal with opposing creature lands and lands that might have activated abilities, like the ones making tokens, since those can be very annoying for a control deck to deal with, since using removal we're eventually gonna run out, same with our sweepers, so if we give the opponent enough time with those lands that keep making tokens each turn, we're gonna end up losing. And then 2 copies of Restless Anchorage can also maybe help us block creatures if the opponent doesn't have removal, or can help pressure planeswalk but we're unlikely to actually win the game with these. And then Meticulous Archive, lots of surveil, can give us a bit more card selection. Also good to enable the Verge to make both colors, since it's both an island and a plains. And then we've got plenty of basics, which we can also find with our Demolition Field. And then a Darker Waste as another untapped land. Want to avoid fast lands typically in control decks, since we want our lands to enter untapped later in the game as well, since we often end up using all of our mana on our various instants and card draw effects. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. 
Okay, we're on the play. We've got a decent hand. Lots of tap lands, but lots of one-man interaction as well. And maybe wait on the surveil until we know what we're up against. Black or green, so mid-range. Okay, quick study seems fine. Can play it alongside three steps ahead. And Innkeeper's Talent, so they're probably on the combo with Raska. Having into the Flood Maw to bounce their enchantment could also be key. And we'll keep up three mana. Happy to quick study. But it's just going to level up. So keeping a counter spell for Vraska is going to be very important as well. For now, not in a hurry to play an untapped lands. Another archive. I don't hate. We already have double three steps ahead. We've got creature interaction, a Jace. Although it's going to be a while before we deploy Jace to win the game. Mirex is a problem, so now I wish I had Demolition Fields. Can maybe go looking for one, or we can keep up three steps ahead with both modes, so we can also draw and discard. So I wouldn't mind if they put something on the stack now. Their creature also has a ward, so we'd have to pay two mana for a smite. And just take my turn. All right, there's Demolition Fields. So if I use it now, I'll still have three steps ahead available. And I don't want to making too many more tokens. So we'll have to eventually clean those up. And with Innkeeper's Talent, every one of their tokens is actually a threat. Yeah, trying to block with Anchorage last turn would not have worked out. Bona levels up all the way. And that would get two counters, so we can still smite. And pay the ward. I think I still hang on to Flood Maw to bounce the Innkeeper's Talent, potentially. And two damage per turn is still manageable. Alright, Soul Partition, another flexible answer. So this way we can counter, draw, and play two-mana interaction if needed. So yeah, bring on the Vraskas. I was just immediately going to go to attackers. So yeah, if I soul partition and pay the ward, I wouldn't be able to counter and draw with three steps ahead. So I guess we'll into the flood maw, pay the ward. And it's going to be a frill back next. Yeah, I think I still counter draw because we'll eventually have to deal with it because of the extra plus one counters. And it's a good use of my mana. And I think I'll hang on to the archive. If we find temporary lockdown, that's a more permanent solution to the talent, although we do see Frill Bank, which can destroy enchantments. So, that's debatable. Yeah, with talent, every one of their creatures is a real threat. For now, we can still counter. And it might be time to deploy Jace. They found a cottage, so that's another threat. And this one doesn't exile land specifically. Good to keep in mind. Right, another Jace. So it might be time to run those out. Just gonna mill for the max amount. With Soul Partition, we can potentially do some tricky things as well, where we don't minus for the full amount, so leave one loyalty and then Soul Partition to replay it once again. That can certainly come up. And we do see Vraska, Liliana, 
That can also be a win condition with uh, Innkeeper's Talent. Bonus looking at what cards are left. But he has still plenty of Raskas. Terra Sunder, also a flexible answer. So keeping Jace in play would not work out. Deadly cover up. Yeah, that's going to try and extract the Jace out of my deck. So now I'm forced to counter. Which leaves me vulnerable to getting comboed, perhaps. So we might have to soul partition the talent then. Alright, lockdown answers talents. And then we can make the play of Jace keep up soul partition. Although the problem is our opponent can play a cottage to attack Jace, so I'll be the first one to have to soul partition. So I guess while they're tapped out, I can just play Jace and immediately soul partition it. And then since we got rid of the talents, they won't be able to combo me next turn with Vraska. Alright, I think this worked out. Opponent's got 16 cards left, so they draw, we mill them for 15, and then they draw from an empty library. And I don't think they'll be able to deal 16 damage. If they cast another cover-up, they cannot get rid of the Jace in exile, so it's very safe here. So I think we have checkmate here. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a keeper. Let's see what we're up against. Soul Partition. I'll keep. We have four lands already. Could maybe use some spot removal. Keep up no more lives. Next turn play another tap land. And a carrot cake. Yeah, I'll let that go. Can always clean it up with lockdown. Wanna keep no more lives for Forge and Caretaker's talents. So I'll get rid of an extra land. Demolition field also gonna be important to deal with our lands that have activated abilities. And yeah, Forge we're happy to counter. Can keep up our four mana counter spell here, as well as demolition field in case they run out one of those lanes. Take one, and a caretaker's talent I think is worth countering. It's the type of card that can easily snowball, so we are out of counter spells now. Don't think I need to lock down just yet. And we have a target for Demolition Field. Must be their last land if they're running it out here. Opponent will draw. So don't really want to send an Anchorage when our opponent could remove it. And Jace isn't bad. Our opponent could potentially finish it off with a burn spell. Although I can also soul partition my own Jace to save it. Crying in response to the mill doesn't make too much sense in case they found something exciting. They would not have been able to keep it. My opponent will attempt to torch the tower with bargain, so yeah, I'll make the play of soul partitioning my own Jace. Still get to draw a card here. Milling another fountain port and drawing another Jace. So we can mill for 30, so 12 more cards to go. And currently we're not under any pressure. They do have another fountain port, which I'll destroy. Could be reasonable to already just mill for 15 here, which sets up the next Jace to draw 3. Using Demolition Field also 
takes a card out of their deck for what it's worth. And they had to shuffle the card they bottomed back into their library. The mill for max amount. Too much noise. I will so 26 your... cards remain. Can have a look. So triple caretaker's talent gone. Although no forges. So they could still have one of those left. High noon. Also not particularly good against us. And they actually run it out. So if I try and cast Lockdown, they can just sacrifice it. Maybe that's okay. Get rid of their fish, and then I can play Jace to draw instead of milling for 15. And hopefully we'll find more action. All that might then get destroyed. So I'll need to draw into a couple more Jaces. I think I'll just uh, be patient for now. Our opponent will cash in the High Noon. And plays another one, okay. So now I actually don't mind uh, animating Anchorage if they attack. They either sack High Noon to destroy it, or we get to ambush the fish. So take my turn. And then now, do we just run it back? Not much has changed. I'll pass. It just feels bad to cast Lockdown and have them sack the High Noon in response. So maybe we can wait for them to make some more tokens. Now if I try and block with Anchorage, they could still cast a removal spell. Opponent has the Helix, so they do have quite a few burn spells, it seems. With High Noon, we could fall to three. So I definitely have to present Anchorage now. And our opponent's gonna be patient. Right, Soul Partition maybe helps. So, can play Lockdown. Play Jace. And hope they don't have a Lightning Helix left, pretty much. Because then with Jace, I could mill them for a bunch, but not so lethal. Yeah, I could mill them for 12, and then Soul Partition back Jace to do it again next turn. Or I could just try and draw 3, which could also draw into a counter spell. Although, for 2 mana, it's not going to be capable of stopping a Lightning Helix. Yeah, I guess we'll draw. Milled double forge, that's nice. And another Jace. Alright, so if we don't get burnt out, we should have it. I'll just take my turn, mill you for 9, and then mill you for a bunch more. In time, nothing could be more vulnerable than your... So unless they have a lethal aligning helix in hand, that should do it. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a hand that could use a few more land drops. But we get to surveil, so I'll try it. Our mana's pretty good to start out, at least. Facing blue-black. And a creature land's already something we'll have to deal with. Opponent's gonna deduce end of turn, so they are ready to play a grindy game here. And another Restless Reef. That's also problematic. At least we hit our land for turn. Opponent draws. And then with this many counter spells, I'm not opposed to using Spellgyre to draw. Mirax, also kind of a win condition here. And a Jace. Yeah, I think I fight over this. Even though it's not the last Jace, but if they mill me, then I might also lose some of my win conditions. And then now I could tap out for my own Jace to return the favor. I think I still keep up my counter spell. And then I can draw end of turn. 
Bowen's got their own demolition field, so if I find one, I'll have to use it right away. And the land is good. No more lies. Could be okay, too. Or I can just look for two lanes instead. Alright, found our own demolition field. So again, if I play it, I need to be prepared to use it right away. So I think we wait a little bit longer. So I can maybe use it and keep up interaction. Opponent will get to make some tokens in the meantime. I think I'm okay bouncing one already. Since those can potentially add up. Not that I think our opponent's necessarily a poison deck. Alright, so now I can Demolition Field Mirax, which I think is more annoying than a Restless Reef when we have a Get Lost in hand. So they'll make another token, but now we'll have Spelljar available. Using the Whale to answer the tokens also decent. But I may not want to tap out. So I'll take a hit for one. <laughs> Quick study's good. So our opponent's hand might be full of creature removal for all we know. Uh, another Jace. With three mana to potentially fight over interaction. Yeah, still worth countering. Opponent will maybe counter back and then we'll see where we're at. That works. And they're just going to minus two. So we could potentially use Get Lost now. For now, I'll quick study. Find another demolition field. And another quick study. Alright, so if I play Jace, I probably have to minus 5 right away. And then I could still get lost, keep up the whale. Yeah, keeping Jace in hand could be a liability if they are playing Duress. So I'm not opposed to that idea. Well, I will have to play Demolition Fields, which maybe I want to use on the Restless Reef first. So maybe I'll wait one more turn on Jace. And then we can quick study instead. Opponents got their own demolition fields. I'm fine if they explore here. Alright, demolition field number three. And into the Flood Maw. So outside of counter spells and maybe discard, so they probably won't have much interaction for our Jace wing condition. So let's get rid of a Restless Reef. So we've been able to use our Demolition Fields. Our opponent hasn't really been able to use theirs. Want to keep it that way. And let's quick study. Possible our opponent's got a counter spell unless we pay two mana, but they don't. And our Soul Partition could also be good alongside Jace. And surveil. Keep it three steps ahead. And uh, yeah, play Jace to mill them is an option. Although they have mana up for a counter spell right now, whereas can maybe play it when the coast is clear. Since our opponent doesn't seem to be using their mana at instant speed anymore. Now I'm okay using the whale. We've taken enough damage. They might actually destroy their own creature, so we don't get access to our adventure, but they let it go. And then, end of turn, play the whale, since I don't expect any threats at instant speed from them. But they probably have removal here. The end. Alright, fair enough. So, this also means we don't want to play Jace and have them exiled from our library. They shuffled our deck, so no more three steps ahead. 
And now that they saw Jace, I just have to commit it. But yeah, we're out of Alter Wing conditions now that both whales are gone. I guess on the flip side, they might have the 5 mana sweeper, which can also exile all the Jaces out of my deck now that there's one in the graveyard. So that's going to be kind of a problem. Opponent's got 21 cards left to my 29. And yeah, they're casting cover up. Any point in casting a No More Lies? Not really. Yeah, that's too bad. So my Jaces are gone. So how does this game end? We don't have any win conditions besides Restless Anchorage, I guess. So it's just waiting until the opponent runs out of cards before we do. But we need to potentially counter a bunch more Jaces. Opponent has, I guess, only one left. So that's still beatable. And we found Demolition Field for their... A restless Reef. You have to start thinking about whether or not it's worth it to grab an extra card out of my deck. Yeah, it probably is. Can have a look at our remaining cards. So, double spell gyre is relevant. Double three steps ahead is relevant. Also, cards they might extract with a cover up. And yeah, that's about it. So, yeah, I guess I do want to find one of those counter spells before our opponent plays another Jace, so I'll get to land here to thin out the deck. So our opponent does not have any threats in their mana base left. Could also keep land in hand in case Liliana shows up and makes me discard. Is their opponent going to start using Demolition Field just to get cards out of my deck? Yeah. But for now we're still ahead in terms of number of cards here, so... I'll get a couple more basics. Now, how many Restless Reeves are they potentially playing four copies? We dealt with three, so they have one left. And... Uh, I think our opponent's also still searching for lanes. Yeah. So yeah, it's just going to be a matter of how many counter spells are left and how many potential win conditions. This is actually my last basic. They did use Demolition Field before I drew Anchorage, which is kind of nice for us. Although not that Anchorage is going to connect. I'm sure they have plenty of spot removal. Found a three steps ahead, so that can fight over one Jace. So now it's just going to be draw go for a while. Opponent has to discard to hand size. Nope, cast a Virtue of Knowledge. Does that matter? I don't think so. Plus we can destroy it with Get Lost. Although I don't think we need to do it right now. Seven cards in hand, so don't need to discard just yet. Bones discarding some sweeper. And now Restless Anchorage is going to get destroyed by Demolition Fields. That's fine. Twelve cards remaining. And yeah, we're out of basics. So 12 verse 16. Alright, time to maybe destroy the Virtue. Although Get Lost might be important for another creature land or Planeswalker. So maybe just ditching a lockdown is better. Although No More Lies is also quickly losing value. Well, isn't magic interesting at times? Play Demolition Fields, but not gonna activate it. Opponent discarding all their removal. We found our second Anchorage. And 
And yeah, no creatures to return with virtue of persistence, which otherwise could have been a powerful threat. Now do we deal with the virtue, or do we just discard something to hand size? Yeah, maybe it's locked down. I don't expect a bunch of tokens out of nowhere. Which would be a reason to maybe keep it. Bone can deduce, that's fine. And draw six cards remaining. So yeah, they must just be looking for Jace. Virtue of knowledge to copy the card draw, sure. You can draw two cards. So one, two, three Jaces. No Jaces in exile, so they probably have one left. And we want to keep up our mana at all times, so we can try and fight over it. Smite can go. Yeah, if they hadn't exiled my whales, Virtue could have been a legit win condition. Realm Breaker, actually pretty good too here. Can activate it to mill me for three, so that could potentially catch up. So I kind of want to fight over it. If I use Soul Partition, they can still replay it and activate it again. So yeah, I wasn't expecting Realm Breaker, but I think I need to fight over it here. Although I might run out of counter spells for Jace now. Right, that instantly resolved, so they might not be able to fight back. We should still have a Spell Gyre or two left in our deck as well. So, worst case scenario, I can also draw with three steps ahead to maybe find another hard counter. Right, opponent goes for Jace. So, I'm assuming this is their last win condition, so I can try and tap them out with no more lies. And then go for three steps ahead. Hoping it doesn't uh, really make a difference. But now they wouldn't be able to three steps ahead back. And then I think I also draw. Since they would still deck first. Right, luckily no negates. Sunfall's not going to do much. Alright, if they have a finisher left, we're probably dead. Breach the Multiverse comes to mind. I'm just gonna pass it back. The Juice, alright, so one card left in deck. So that's their last chance. Virtue of Knowledge happens. And our opponent explodes, awesome! So, opponent wanted to remove all our win conditions, but they still ended up decking first. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got some bounce spells and some card draw. Could be good in certain matchups. Thinking of the aura decks especially, but points also blue-white. And it's looking like a control deck and not an oculus deck. Well, at least instant speed card draws good, whale is a threat. And our opponent's playing a version with apparatus. So that's going to be a must counter, although we can also bounce it with Into the Flood Maw. Okay, so pass a turn. Problem with tapping out for a quick study is that our opponent can tap out for an apparatus as well. Alright, opponent's got a tap land, so now we can quick study. So this might prove to be an interesting battle. Our opponent's win condition could be the wide sweeper making might tokens. Our opponent responding with three steps ahead to draw and discard, interesting. Getting rid of a lockdown. Yeah, discarding to hand size is potentially going to be a thing as well in this matchup. So just hitting our land drops each turn is of utmost importance. For now, a lockdown can probably go. And then I do want to keep hitting my land drops. Although I'm going to have to discard to hand size here if I quick study. But yeah, finding a land is pretty important, so I'll still go for it. 
opponent can maybe play their Mind Splice Apparatus now, or a Silver Scrutiny to draw three. Found a land at least, and now we can pretty easily discard Smites. Don't want to completely tap out for Jace yet. Anything end of turn? I don't think so. Luckily found a land. So now we could also flash in the Whale end of turn as a threat, even though it's unlikely to go the distance. Augury we can let go. Not entirely sure what the black is for, could just be for removal spells. So yeah, if I try and Demolition Field the Demolition Field, they use it on Anchorage and Response, so then I don't get to get a land. So yeah, end of turn, might be okay to play the Whale. It's kind of a distraction, unlikely to do much. But that way we don't have to discard to hand size as much. That point is going to get lost. Our land is good. Now no more lines is also quickly losing value. So the sooner we can fire it off the better. Keep another Jace on top. Opponent did not make a shuffle with Demolition Field. Okay, do we want to do anything here? Probably just pass still. And then I could fire this off end of turn to draw. Yeah, taking away their black mana doesn't seem relevant. And then don't need Whale, keep Demolition Field, sure. And Soul Partition could also be useful at exiling our own Jace to replay it then. Speaking of Jace. Got a few in hand now, opponent's got 37 cards left, so three of those could do it. Although resolving them is a different story. But yeah, not completely opposed to trying one out. Would still have three steps ahead left as a hard counter. The first one they might let resolve, they might fight over the second one. But I'll immediately mill for the max amount. You cannot win. Alright. So... We get to have a look here. Silver Scrutiny, gone, so there's one left in the deck. Did we mill any win conditions? Doesn't seem like it. But yeah, Jace is a pretty good win condition in control mirrors. I see, outrageous robbery. Yeah, that seems worth fighting over. We'll use our no more lies. So that's what the black is for. Yeah, maybe last turn I could have used Demolition Fields on their black source before casting the counter spell. Opponent's gonna main phase robbery again, but as it turns out, we have Jace in hand, so we'll just win the game now. Surrender your mind, and out of curiosity, we can have a look at their deck. Season of Weaving could also be effective. But yeah, it looks like their only real win condition is the Outrageous Robbery to either mill someone out or win with our own cards. So glad we had Jason hand already. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands got some reasonable tools against aggro. I'll try it. Turn 1 Duress is pretty effective here. They not only get to take our best card, but now they know what they need to play around. Takes our Counterspell, lock down the draw. I'll start with Anchorage, give us a bit more time to decide on the Surveil. And now a Bat can snipe the Lockdown, perhaps. So if they're heavy on the discard, we just want to be able to build up our mana and eventually 
string together some card draw spells. And a darker waste land 5 is probably not needed right now. Bat can't really attack because of smite. So it's a bit of a waiting game. And we'll keep up three steps ahead. And then next turn we can play Archive. The creature lands will also be an issue. Currently don't have any demolition fields to answer those. Might end up using double smite. Although that's not pretty. I guess we'll keep our uh, four mana either counter or draw. On 5 mana we could both counter and draw to and discard, so that's a decent use of our mana. Opponent wants to take away a creature or artifact, that's fine. So whereas the rest was effective, Dreams of Steel and Oil not so much. Although now they know about 3 steps ahead. Okay, pass it back. So kind of just hoping they put something on the stack. Another bat is good enough. Does mean they get to attack me this turn for one, but that's okay. Um, yeah, I guess I'll get rid of a smite. Into the flood mark and still bounce a cottage if it attacks. And Jace is good, although not in a hurry to cast it. And Dread Knight would draw, lose a life. That is the kind of card that could be problematic, although Smite is actually a clean answer. Yeah, I guess we'll let that go. And our opponent's going to cast it. I think I'm happy just drawing. If we can find a lockdown or a sunfall, we can clean up. And yeah, we'll keep both. So not really in a hurry to cast a sunfall if we want to keep up our counter spell as well. It's just that playing Jace is going to be kind of tricky here with all this pressure on the board. But we can just pass. If they attack, we can potentially exile. Although they could also end up destroying their own Dread Knights to get the adventure back. So we need to keep that into account. Yeah, they probably have some dead removal spells in hand. So I'll just take three for now. They want to get into this fight. Now, Archfiends is good to Sunfall, so that's going to resolve. And again, I'll draw. Just want to keep hitting my land drops as well. And yeah, those are both fine. Although a tap land means that I cannot sunfall and keep up three steps ahead. Given that I have into the flood mod to bounce whatever permanent they would place, probably fine still. And Anchorage could be a decent way to close out the game as well. Their opponent's going to destroy their own Dread Knight, so they can use the Adventure. I'm going to let that go. And then Lockdown could also deal with uh, Dread Knight, potentially. Now Get Lost also a nice answer for the Cottage. And Lockdown would then clean up the tokens that we give them. So I'm actually hoping they animate the Cottage. Alright, and we can destroy it before they attack. They're already in the beginning of combat, so they won't be able to use this mana in their main phase. 
And we get to untap. Can wait on lockdown. And now is maybe a good time to resolve Jace. Can mill and draw. Find another Jace. So we're starting to turn the corner here. Glissa is fine. We'll find a way to deal with it, even if it's just plussing with Jace. Now, if they try and explore, we could bounce it. Then they still get to replay it. I don't think it's much of a concern. Opponent found a duress. That's a good one to keep. So what's our best draw here? Demolition fields, destroying the cottage and making them shuffle their deck. So, yeah, don't mind just... Uh, Drawing again. Another Jace and a Demolition Field. There we go. Do we bounce Glissa anyway? Yeah, now Jace is probably just going to mill for 9. Which is close to setting up the next Jace. Yeah, let's not mess around with Glissa. Or toughness also put it out of range from Smite, which our opponent still knows about. So destroy your cottage. Shuffle away the duress if they want to land. Is this one optional? I know Field of Ruin wasn't. Grab lands. Mill you for a nine. And then now the next two Jaces can mill for 30 total, so I guess we just win here. Just enough mana to cast both. So I guess the Demolition Field wasn't even necessary. Bone playing the Demon Package in a Golgari mid-range shell. All right, uh, that'll do it. Awesome. So yeah, we got to play some long and interesting games with our blue-white control deck. Seem to have dodged aggro decks, which can be a reasonable matchup if we draw the cheap interaction early. But of course there are matchups where our opponent just gets ahead very quickly. We maybe don't have the right interaction and we just die on turn three or four. So those matchups will come up. So that's always the balancing act with blue-white control. How much cheap interaction for aggro do you keep versus how many hard counters for control and mid-range matchups. But I think we've got a pretty good balance so far for the current best of one meta. If it were to shift somewhat, you can always make some slight adjustments to improve your matchups. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. Wanna Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.